They have links, possibly. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you guys. I'm open to answering all questions. Without being too scary, obviously. Right. I see it all. He does. Yes, he does. What was it like, sort of just creating that character and developing it, knowing these different sides of things? Yeah, I, I mentioned this in the in the panel, but I, the character isn't in isn't in this isn't in the comic, so I was able to not. Uh, I'm a warrior, uh, and I get anxious about how my character or the performance is going to be perceived, especially by fans, by passionate fans, something like this, like a little weird comic, a piece of intellectual property that millions of people adore. So that can uh, keep you up at night. Um, so I very smartly um, just stuck to Chris's words. Um, he wrote some really brilliant scripts. It's, this is a heavy, literally heavy. Um, it is. There's so much happening in this series, and it's not just you know on the surface it, it, it's it's for young girls becoming young women, um, but that is layer one of fifty different layers, and so. He made the show really, he just leaned into the ambitiousness of the series. Um, so building the character was all about following Chris's words. I'm a, I came up in the theater, so when you're a theater actor, you don't, there's no studio, there's no writer like whispering, you know, new lines, unless you're doing a new play. Well, the play is written, there's beginning, middle, and end. Honor that and get out of the way, basically, is what I tried to do. Yeah. We just spoke to um, Adina a bit about, you know, why maybe the old watchers' perspective is like a valid one to like not want to rewrite the past. Yeah. Um, is your Rebel Alliance like fighting the old watch? And if so, what's their angle and why we should be able to change? Yeah, I mean, their take is, is don't change anything because it benefits them. Okay. Because it keeps them comfortable, uh, wealthy, um, and in power. And so the people who, I think about, you know, like how we talk about politics now, there are people who like love looking back on the, the, on the 80s. Yeah. And saying it's this beautiful time and just like, oh my God, it was so much fun. For who? For who? For who? Um, and that's their take. They are they the, the, the way that, that that time has unfolded up to this moment and this moment has benefited them. So the standard time fighters are saying, hold on, there's a lot, whole lot of other people who haven't been fed, who haven't been taken care of, who have been ignored, who've been thrown away, who've been sort of squashed. So it's fun to sort of play. Um, I don't know. I guess just the uh, the underdog, you know, who's pushing back against uh, this enormous conglomeration of power. I'm just a guy in a barn in Ohio, uh, Larry is. Um, so it was fun to sort of play a small character trying to fight back against this, you know, enormous, uh, enormous power. And she's so good. She's so good. She has <laughs> such weight and presence to her. My God. Um, that was the first time I'd saw, seen her watching the clips. Um, and she's so, she's so good. Um, it was fun to go up against her. Yeah, not easy. Oh, okay. Um, so, so I know that you're not in the press. Right. So, we've talked a lot about how you're trying to make it so that people are like, oh man, like, you do So, what rules do you follow? Like, what do you do to make it so that people are sure? Yeah. You know, I try to um, not. A lot of actors worry about that. Um, there's a lot of actors who are like, oh man, they, they worry so much about how they're going to be perceived. And their sort of everyday happiness is based on whether or not uh, the audience is responding to their, their performance, whether it's like on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter, like if a fan reaches out and says, oh, I loved you on that show, then that day, that actor who lives and dies by audience feedback has a good day. I try to live sort of, I try to live right here. I try not to get too wrapped up in how an audience is going to react. Because I know I'm, 
I'm vulnerable to like making it either it making you feel great or making you make me feel bad. When I was really young, I was probably your age, I did a play and I read the review. It was a big mistake because it was a bad review. <laughs> and I said I turned to one of the actors and I was like, I read the review. It's like you can read them. But if you believe the good ones, you gotta believe the bad ones. And so I was like, okay, no more reviews. I'm never gonna read another review in my life. So it's hard. It's hard to um, not take it personally if someone doesn't like your performance or the show that you're on and just say, all right, maybe we'll, we'll get them next time. We'll see. But it's, yeah, it's, 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 uh, you're, you're very vulnerable being out there. Um, well, that's just part of the job. As you get older, you, get, you adapt to it. That's a good question. Ooh. Yeah. Oh. It's obviously a very female-heavy cast. So talk to me about that dynamic being that well. That, I mean, we agree. The boy. Uh, you know, how is that dynamic coming in? And, and talk to us I, I wish it, I, I wish this set wasn't like polar opposite of so many of my other sets, which are predominantly... You know, old white men. I, I wish, I wish, but it was, uh, it was like night and day. Um, it really was. And all the directors were women, and it made a complete difference. Camera operator was a woman, all hair and makeup, transportation, um, uh, CG. Uh, all like, the head of departments. What's that? All, all your HRDs, all your head of departments. Were yes, women. all of them. Yeah. They were all women. Um, carpenters, and like every, every sort of... Every, it, wherever you looked, um, there was someone. Uh, there was a woman in power, and I, it, Can those you sets. Elaborate, like why? Like, and sorry to jump in, but like, what? What kind of difference are you talking about? Like, um, there is a when you're surrounded. This was this was Chris and the producers. I think consciously making it more comfortable for the girls yeah. to be in, a, in an environment surrounded. Because, you know, sadly, I think men more than women um, are not as, and I'm generalizing here, and this will come back to bite me, I'm sure, but they are not as generous and sympathetic and understanding to what it means to um, work on a team and be one part, the performer is one part of this piece. Um, there was warmth, and sometimes uh, not all sets are um, as protective of, of that, I guess. And I'm really parsing my words here because of the cameras. Uh, the cameras why are off. Say, no, no. Good why don't you just say some of the positive attributes you saw in the women that were in power? Yeah, um, I, I think the biggest thing was this lesson that was being sent down to the girls, that women can run every department. And for them, at 12, 13, 14, they get used to it. So the next job that they're on, when it's dudes and one woman, they go, we're all the ladies. And then that trickles up to producers and studios and networks, and they go, oh shit, yeah. No, we need to make this effort. Um, so the, but the biggest difference was a generosity, really, and a, and a kindness and an understanding that sometimes isn't always there. Thank you Thank so much you for sharing that.